Hello everybody and welcome to the next installment of my bookshelf tour. So today we're going to be talking about poetry. So my poetry shelf, you can see this right here, and then also plays, just because these are like the two smallest collections that I have. So I figured I would just group them together. My plays are at the very bottom of my middle grade shelf actually. So let's get into it. Starting with poetry, we have Faithful and Virtuous Night by Louise Gluck. And Rest in Peace. Bye bye. No, it's okay. Don't worry, it's fine. My Index of Slightly Horrifying Knowledge by Paul Guest. Primate Behavior by Sarah Lindsay. American Happiness by Jacqueline Allen Trimble. Time Winds by Alfred Kisubi. The Sonnets by William Shakespeare. Selected Poems of Malcolm Lowry. Annulments by Zach Savage. Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, which of course I own because this is the basis of the musical Cats. Earth in Anger, 25 Poems of Love and Despair for Planet Earth by James P. Lenfesty. Gungadin and Other Favorite Poems by Rudyard Kipling. Ten Jewish American Poets, edited by Isaac Moseson. Talisman by Lisa C. Kruger. Rhythm and Guts by Stanley E. Banks. In the Museum of Coming and Going by Laura Stott. Sea Room by Maria Fluke. Tumbled Dry by Charmaine Donovan. One Red Eye by Kirsten Dirking. The Christmas Show by Harriet Levin. I definitely only bought this book because it had the word Christmas in the title and I just really love Christmas. Hourglass Studies by Chrysia Jopek. The Daughtery by Kirsten Kashuk. Opening the Doors by Judith Adams. Spoke and Dark by Carolyn Guinzio. Vanishing Line by Jeffrey Yang. Map to the Stars by Adrian Matejka. Cicadas by Roberta Hill. Cell Traffic by Hyde E. Erdrich. And then Chocolate City Latina by Esperanza Malave Cintron. This is the last book on my top shelf. It's really all of the individual poetry collections that I own. So now we're going to move on to shelf number two, which is more anthologies and larger books. So we have The Collected Poems of Emily Dickinson. And then another book of collected poems by Emily Dickinson, which is completely unnecessary, but I really love both of these editions for different reasons, and I just don't want to get rid of either one of them, so I have them both. Then we have The Poems 
by John Keats. The Collected Poems by Sylvia Plath. Gilgamesh, a new English version by Stephen Mitchell. The Best American Poetry, 2014, edited by Terence Hayes and David Lemon. This was actually a textbook of mine for a class I took in college, and there's some pretty good poems in here. Thirty-three Minnesota Poets, edited by Monica and Emilio de Gracia. Fifty-two Ways of Looking at a Poem, a Poem for Every Week of the Year, by Ruth Pedel. Maybe next year I will try to actually do this book and read a poem every single week from it. We'll see if that happens. But that's the last one on the second shelf down, and really that's my entire poetry collection. It's not super big. The last shelf on my poetry bookshelf has like, um, I don't really know what to call them, like zines and independent poetry publications. So those are down here, just grouped at the bottom. I don't really want to show them all to you because a lot of them are from schools I went to and I don't know, it's just more personal information that I don't really need to go over all the details, but I'll just point out what they are and what they're from so you can kind of get an overview of what's down here. So this first one right here is a little bind up of a poetry collection from all the students in a poetry class that I took. So we all contributed a poem and we made like our own little poetry chapbook of the whole class. It was a really rewarding class. I feel like I grew so much as a poet through that class and I really like having this and seeing my other classmates' poems in there and just having it as a little kind of a prize of going through that class and everything I learned from it. The next one is a little literary journal that some students made in my high school, actually. I didn't really have anything to do with it ever, though. It was other people, but it's nice to have it. This next one is just a local, very independently made literary thing that I picked up at, I think, like a coffee shop. It's just like little poems and stuff. I don't remember how this one got passed on to me, but it's the high school literary journal from the high school where a couple of my cousins attended. So these right here are all copies of the literary journal from when I was in college. And I was actually on the editing team when I was in school. So most of these are from when I was working there. And so I helped put them together. I really loved working on that journal. I really liked taking submissions and putting them all together and creating like this really lovely piece of poetry and art and essays and stuff from students. Um, I was also published in a handful of these and so I just really really like having these. It was a really good experience overall working on that team and like getting my work published and it just was really nice. So these are all from then. And then this last one is another literary journal from the other college I went to. I ended up transferring schools, so I didn't have anything to do with this literary journal. It was just a copy that I picked up for free and I grabbed it to read it. So yeah, that's from a different school that I went to. And that is officially the end of my poetry collection. So now we can move on to my plays and take a look at all the plays that I own. So the first one is my Riverside Shakespeare book. This is just the collected works of William Shakespeare. Next up, we have seven plays of the modern theater 
edited by Harold Klerman. This is from like the 60s, so it's not quite as modern anymore, but there's just an anthology of plays. Out Front, Contemporary Gay and Lesbian Plays, edited by Don Shuey. And this is another anthology. Of course, this is just full of queer theater, which I obviously love, and I just think this is really cool. This is my Norton Anthology of Drama, Volume 2, and this was actually a textbook for a class that I took in college, and so all of these tabs are plays that I read and studied in class, but there are still so many more plays in this book that I have not read. It is super, super dense. It's a really great collection of plays, so there's a lot that I can still get to on this one. The Vagina Monologues by Eve Ensler. 27 short plays by Christopher Durang. I think this is the first book in a series of all of his collected works. I did so many Christopher Durang pieces when I was in high school, so he's like an old favorite of mine. Fiddler on the Roof by Joseph Stein and Jerry Bach. I really love the musical Fiddler on the Roof, and this is just the script in a beautiful edition, so I bought this book because I thought it was so pretty, and I thought it would be nice to read it, but haven't gotten to it yet. Sylvia by A.R. Gurney. Hapgood by Tom Stoppard. The Tragedy of Mr. Morn by Vladimir Nabokov. This one is actually a book called Shakespeare's World of Images by Donald A. Stauffer, and it's actually nonfiction. It's analyzing different elements of Shakespeare, but I have it grouped with my plays because Obviously, it's nonfiction about theater, so I have it with all my drama. Six Plays by Henrik Ibsen, just another anthology. The Shadow Box by Michael Christopher. Six Plays of Strindberg, obviously by August Strindberg. Plays by George Bernard Shaw. By George Bernard Shaw. Another anthology. A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansbury. Bent by Martin Sherman. The Crucible by Arthur Miller. M. Butterfly by David Henry Huang. The Heiress by Ruth and Augustus Getz. I was actually in a production of this when I was in college, so that's what this is from. August, Osage County by Tracy Letts. The 39 Steps by Patrick Barlow. I was also in a production of this when I was in college. It was super fun. If you think that this play is going to be serious, like the Hitchcock film, it's not. It's super funny. I would definitely encourage you to go see it if you ever get a chance to. It's a really funny play. Dirty Linen and New Found Land, two plays by Tom Stoppard. Enter a Free Man, also by Tom Stoppard. Equus by Peter Schaefer. Chekhov, the major plays, obviously by Anton Chekhov. 
Marvin's Room by Scott McPherson. The Woods by David Mamet. Our Town by Thornton Wilder. The Heidi Chronicles, Uncommon Women and Others, and Isn't It Romantic by Wendy Wasserstein. Broadway's Beautiful Losers, The Strange History of Five Neglected Plays by Marilyn Stasio. So this has five different plays in their entirety and then kind of an essay about them. And that's all about shows that flopped, which I think is really fun. Rumors by Neil Simon. Broadway Bound by Neil Simon. Biloxi Blues by Neil Simon. And then we have another anthology. This is called The Comedy of Neil Simon, obviously by Neil Simon. I think there's like seven plays in here. I, I just own a lot of Neil Simon. Then we have Man and Superman and three other plays by George Bernard Shaw, yet another anthology. Ten Little Indians, a mystery play in three acts by Agatha Christie. Many Moons by Charlotte Shorpenning. This is based on the kids' book by James Thurber and I was actually in this play when I was in college as well, so that was a fun one because it's a show for kids. And then lastly, we have Four Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow is Enough by Ntozake Shange. And this is actually a choreo poem, so it's a big long poem, but it's meant for the stage. So, you know, this actually ties together my poetry and plays really well. And that is it. So those are all of my plays, all of my poetry. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys tomorrow with my graphic novels. And then we'll be done with my bookshelf tour. So almost there. Thanks for sticking with it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.